it, day to day it changes. Sometimes it seems like it was just yesterday, as you said, or a hundred years ago. It's it, every day is a brand new day, still after 15 years. Can you describe sort of what what those days were like for you in the aftermath of what what happened to Matthew? Well, it was it was uh, it was turmoil. Afterwards, we, we weren't sure where we stood. We weren't sure what we were going to do. We weren't you sure. all were living, you and your husband, Dennis, right. who's as wonderful as Judy is. Uh, you were both living in Saudi Arabia at the time because of Dennis's job. Right. So right. You, were, you were very far away. And so that must have added to the agony of wondering what in the world was going on with your, with your son. Right. We got a phone call in the middle of the night, um, which seemed not unusual to us because Matt was always calling us in the middle of the night. Time zones were a little tricky for Matt. So uh, the doctor said, we have Matt in the hospital. And it's like, what do you mean you have Matt in the hospital? This is crazy. He said, is there's been an attack, and um, we think you need to come home. And, and I was still having trouble processing the whole thing. And he said, it's, you, you need to come home. He couldn't even tell me what had happened then. They knew nothing, um, only that he'd been found. So that flight from Saudi Arabia. Right, it's a 19-hour, it's a it was a 36-hour trip to get there, and we had to wait 19 hours to leave because it was early morning and flights don't leave there till the middle of the night, and we had paperwork we had to do, visas and travel and all of that. So you know, it was a long time before we could even get to Matt, which made it all the harder. But you tend to go into this autopilot mode where you know there's a list of things you have to do. And if you think too much about why you're doing them, you may not get them done at all. And so we were very much engaged in the process to leave before we could admit to ourselves what we were gonna find when we got there. And when you got there, what did you find? The press was surrounding the hospital. We had no idea that this had become a national story. We couldn't even figure out why it was a national story. This was very, you know, our family, a very personal story. And I was really worried because, because Matt was gay, we thought oh, they're gonna blame Matt for what happened because that's what the environment was like then. And we, our first stop was Minneapolis, our second stop, I guess, and we picked up our younger son. And there in the airport, on the headlines of the New York Times, was a Wyoming gay student attacked, and it's like, oh my God, I can't believe this is happening to us. Um, you got to the hospital and you saw him, and he was in terrible shape. He was. They snuck us in, we went up to ICU. We weren't even sure it was him, because his face was swollen, and, um, but then when we got closer, we could see scars and you know little marks on his face. And, one of his eyes was partially open. We could see the color, and um, he, was a, he was a beautiful child even then.